What's up guys, let's talk about the best budget iPhones in 2024. So if you're interested in only iPhone, these are the phones that I would consider looking at if you're on a strict budget. So the first one I want to talk about is the iPhone 12 mini. This phone is very, very cheap coming in at around 200 bucks on Amazon uh, renewed and it is a pretty good phone for the most part. There's only one kind of issue with this phone, uh, but the design over here is very modern. It has an aluminum frame. It's got a glass back. It's IP68 dust and water resistant. And what's unique about the mini series is that it's very, very compact. So it's very easy to one hand these phones. Uh, so this phone does have still a very good display. It's got the XDR OLED display, 1200 nits at peak brightness at 5.4 inches. So like I said, it's a very small phone. It's 1080p and 476 for the PPI. It has a really nice display, very good colors, pretty decent uh, indirect sunlight as well too. And overall, I think my favorite thing about using this phone was that it's just very light and easy to hold, uh, especially if you like me, you kind of have smaller hands, right? Um, but this phone launched with iOS 14, so this phone has actually a few more years of software updates as well too. And you have the Apple A14 chipset. So the cool thing about older iPhones is that the chipset on these phones are really, really good. So this phone still pretty much feels like a you know iPhone 15 Pro, pretty much, right? Um, it can still play PUBG at HDR Extreme. It still flies through iOS without a problem, really. And there's really no issue when it comes to performance on this phone. It also has 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM, which I think is a little bit low, as you know, in 2024. Considering if you take a lot of photos and video and stuff like that, then you run out of storage quite a bit. Um, now, this phone has pretty good speakers, especially considering the size of the phone. There's a good amount of bass here. Of course, you have Face ID. You have the MagSafe uh, on board as well, too. This phone also still has very good cameras. It has a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It shoots in 4K 60 with a 12 megapixel selfie that also shoots in 4K 60. And you're getting some really good shots on the iPhone 12. I still think it does pretty decent in low light as well too. In good lighting conditions, it's still gonna give you a very good shot. And video is always really solid. Uh, on these older iPhones. I'm always impressed with iPhone video just in general. Uh, so overall, I think the, the 12 mini is a, just a great photo uh, taker. So the thing about this phone, so this is the issue with this phone. It has a 2,227 milliamp hour battery. It's got wireless charging. Like I said, the MagSafe is there. The battery life is not good on this phone. And even if you're a light user, I would say you get around like four hours of screen on time. Uh, so that's really not a full day. So this is a phone that you definitely will charge if you're like gaming and stuff like that. Um, but what you can do is you can buy a battery pack with this phone. Um, they have like battery cases with this phone and you can, you know, kind of charge it like that um, if you're a heavier user. But yeah, that's the only thing about this phone is that you kind of pay the price, you know, for you know, having such a small phone with this, you know, specific model. We're going to talk about the 13 mini a little bit later, but I think for 200 bucks, I think this is a really good phone to consider. All right, next is going to be the iPhone 13. So I think this is the phone that I think most people should buy if they're looking for an older iPhone. It's around 350 bucks and it's a very, very good phone. It almost has pretty much no flaws with it. Um, so it's got the aluminum frame. It's got the more modern looking iPhone design as well too. It's got the IP68 dust and water resistant. It is a little bit boxy, so it's kind of sharp uh, phone to hold. But overall, it's still a very nice looking phone. And then you also do have a 6.1 inch display. So again, not a super big display, but a decent sized display. It's an XDR OLED display. It's still kind of easy to one hand as well too. 1200 nits peak brightness. This one is 1170 by 2532 resolution at 460 for the PPI. Again, a very nice display when it comes to colors. Outdoor visibility is still going to be pretty decent on here as well too. So no issues with the display. My only thing about all of these older iPhone displays is that there's no type of high refresh rate. But again, if you're used to using iPhones, you probably don't care. Uh, but the cool thing about this phone is that this phone has a lot more years of uh, iOS updates. So I think it launched with iOS 15. So you got you know plenty of time to get a bunch of updates in. Uh, so that's really nice. And then you also have the Apple A15 chip on here. Again, 
blazing, blazing, blazing fast phone. It is still, I mean, the, if you look at the Geekbench scores and Tutu scores, these older iPhones just, they really crush it when it comes to performance here. So again, this is a phone that easily will play pretty much anything you throw at it, Call of Duty, PUBG, is going to be playing at the best settings of course and then you also have 128 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of ram on here again which is decent no issues with that i like i said it's better than the 64 gigs on the 12 mini this phone also has stereo speakers which again have a good amount of bass very loud so no issues you got face id on here of course you got the magsafe of course on here as well too the cameras are definitely still really good i compared it to the uh the newer iPhones, the iPhone 15 Pro and all that stuff, and it still takes really good steals. It's a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Uh, the only thing missing on these standard models is a telephoto lens. You would have to get the Pro model for that. Uh, but besides that, it still takes great photos. Very consistent, the ultra wide to the main lens. Pretty good colors. Also very good video. You get 4K 60 video on the front and back with a 12 megapixel selfie. And again, this phone is gonna perform pretty decent in low light as well as if you're in great lighting, you'll get some amazing shots. So like I said, you know, I usually don't try to tell people don't buy into the hype of uh, like, you know, the iPhone 14, 15 is going to have such a dramatically better camera. If you really put them side by side, it's really most people can't tell the difference. So this is still a really good camera. Uh, so this phone actually has pretty good battery life. Uh, I'm able to get almost around six hours of screen on time out of this one with 87 percent battery health it's got a 3240 milliamp hour battery again your wireless charging is on board with the magsafe and you can like i said easily get around close to six hours of screen on time with this phone uh, so i don't really have any major issues with this one i think it's a great phone to consider all right guys the next phone i would look at is the iphone 13 mini so this phone comes in at 300 bucks i would look at ebay for this because i think they have the best price on this one so it's 120 you know bucks more than the iphone uh, 12 mini which i think is really good considering that this phone pretty much solves the problem with the 12 mini as far as battery life so if you want to pay the you know the extra 120 it depends on the price but 120 130 bucks i would definitely get this one if you really really want like a compact iphone because this pretty much again solves that problem so this one essentially the same design it's an aluminum frame ip68 dust and water resistant glass back again very compact very easy to hold same display at 5.4 inches has the xdr oled display 1200 nits peak brightness at 1080p 476 for the ppi again very nice looking phone very modern looking and then this phone also again launched with ios 15 so it's going to have plenty of years of software updates and this one even has the apple a15 chip which is just extremely good um and again, it pretty much blows through anything. So whether you're playing PUBG, Call of Duty, you can play them at high settings, no problem. Now this base one has 128 gigs and four gigs of RAM, which is something that I really like compared to the, the 12 mini with the 64 gigs. So I think that definitely, if you're not on like a super you know tight budget, if you got that extra hundred you know something dollars to spend, definitely get uh, the 13 mini here. So performance wise, it's going to be a B still. Great stereo speakers. Again, Face ID, the MagSafe uh, compatibility is on board here. The cameras are even better here. It has a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Again, essentially takes the same pictures as the iPhone 13. Has a 4K 60 video on the front and back with a 12 megapixel selfie. So again, you're getting the same performance on the you know the 13 and even a 13 Pro as far as still photography goes. Um, so again, video is going to be really great on here. I had no issue with the overall pictures great colors great dynamic range again solid video as well too so again really no issues as far as the 13 mini goes and like I said Apple pretty much fixed the battery life with this phone and I think it has a lot to do with this a15 chip so it's got a 2438 milliamp hour battery it's got the wireless MagSafe charging and then you also have your standard wireless charging battery life is very good you can actually get six hours of screen on time uh, out of this phone pretty much uh, so you will definitely notice the difference from the 12 mini to the 13 mini uh, for sure when it comes to battery life but it's just an awesome phone to consider especially if you want something more compact all right so next is the iphone 12 so this is a pretty interesting device and if you live in the united states this is as low as i would go picking up like a used refurbished iphone 
Um, and we'll talk about the iPhone 11 next, but this is as low as I would go because this phone's around 250 bucks, and it's still a really good phone. You still have, you know, a, a couple more years of software updates, maybe like two, and you can still get really good. I mean, it's a, it's a great phone, but like I said, if you can afford the 13, I would go with that one. But the 12 for 250 bucks, it's a really really good deal if you want something a little bit bigger as compared to the you know the iPhone 12 mini or iPhone 13 mini. Uh, so it's got an aluminum frame, it's IP68 dust and water resistant. Again, pretty much the same design. It still has a you know somewhat modern design, very boxy feeling as well too. This one has a 6.1 inch display. Again, the XDR OLED display, 1200 nits peak brightness, 1170 by 2532 resolution. So very nice display as far as resolution and sharpness, 460 for the PPI. Again, no real issues with the panel on here. Great panel, right? This phone has the Apple A14 chipset, 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM. Again, if you download a lot of games, videos, the 64 gigs might not be enough. You can't use the cloud storage and stuff like that if you want, but again, just take that into consideration. Um, but performance wise, again, the, the 12 is still actually going to do a great job. I was still able to play PUBG at HDR Extreme. I was still able to play pretty much any games, bounce in and out of applications without any major slowdown. So again, no real issues. Great sounding speakers on here. Again, Face ID, MagSafe is on here, works well. Wireless charging is on board as well too. And the cameras on here are still pretty good as you can see from the shots. 12 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel ultra wide. Again, 4K60 video on the front and back with a 12 megapixel selfie. And like I said, you're going to get great photos. It does decent in low light as well too. So again, no issues with the iPhone 12. Again, for this price point, I think the photos are perfectly fine. Battery life is pretty decent on here. It's a 2800 milliamp hour battery. And you can almost get around 6 hours of screen on time out of this phone. It's not quite, but the battery life is not terrible. I wouldn't say it's you know as bad as the 12 mini. Uh, but definitely, you get decent battery life on the iPhone 12. Uh, so this is a good phone to consider uh, for this price point. All right, lastly, it's going to be the iPhone 11. So the reason why I said to avoid the iPhone 11 if you live like in the States is because the phone is way too closely priced to the iPhone 12, uh, which you should get the iPhone 12 over the 11 because they're both, you know, they're just priced too close to each other. Um, but again, I noticed that I have I have a lot of people from overseas, so there it could be like a huge price gap between the 12 and the 11 if you're overseas. So if you can get an iPhone 11 for a really good price, and there's a big price gap between the 12, definitely pick up the iPhone 11. It's still a great phone, honestly. I, we looked at this phone not too long ago. It's still a really good phone, surprisingly. It's got the aluminum frame. I think this design is way, way more comfortable than the, the boxier, sharper design that we've seen. It's IP68, dust and water resistant. And like I said, way more comfortable. It doesn't kind of cut into the palm. And um, this one, it has the Retina IPS LCD display, which is decent, but it's not as good as the, you know, the OLED displays that we've seen. It's a 6.1 inch display and it's not the really the highest resolution. It's like 720p plus. It's 326 for the PPI as well too. Now the, the screen itself still looks fairly sharp and, you know, I don't have a big issue with the display, but spec wise, it's not really impressive. And then this phone, the thing about the iPhone 11 is that I don't know how many more updates this phone will get. I think this phone might get iOS 18 and then that might be it. Um, so again, keep that in mind. It's probably going to get at least one more update. And now it has the Apple A13 chipset on here. And surprisingly, this phone still, again, like I said, these older iPhones run really well. It's still able to play PUBG at HDR Extreme. So you can do some gaming on here, no problem. 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM is on board. Uh, stereo speakers are decent sounding, pretty good uh, amount of bass on here. You get Face ID on here as well too. The cameras on here definitely, uh, I can see the I can see the age in the cameras a little bit, um, especially when it comes to low light. It just gets a little bit softer and less detail. But in good lighting, you can still get a pretty good decent shot out of the 11. It's got a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It shoots in 4K 60 on the front and back with a 12 megapixel selfie. And again, like I said, the thing about this phone is that you'll notice kind of a softer kind of shot uh, when you're looking at the other phones on this list. So just keep that in mind. Decent photos, but again, you can kind of see the age of this phone a little bit. 
And um, I would say battery life, again, is just kind of average. It's not too bad. It's a 3,110 milliamp hour battery. There is no max safe or anything like that. It's just standard wireless charging. And like I said, you get somewhat decent battery life out of this phone if you're not gaming too heavy. Um, but the iPhone 11, like I said, is a good phone to consider, especially if you live overseas and there's a massive price gap. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.